you've come to the right place to design and order custom printed circuit boards over the web. That's what we do here at pad to pad Hi, I'm Aurora Nestle and welcome to pad to pad At pad to pad we make it quick and easy to design, price, and order the circuit boards you need. At the heart of pad to pad is the unique, easy yet powerful design software. In this video, I'll walk you through the basics of designing a simple circuit board. I hope you will find this helpful and fun. The circuit board will have just a few components to show you the basics. I'll give you some cool tips also. Please note that we are constantly improving the software, and this video may have some differences with the current software version. So, let's get started. First, let's take a look at the pad to pad software screen. At the top of the screen is the menu. Below the menu is the top toolbar. At the left edge is the left toolbar. Point to any button for a description of how to use the button. The main area is the workspace. The area at the bottom is a status bar. Now, let's specify the settings for the new board. Here we go. First, let's choose File, New to start a new design. This is the settings dialog. Most boards are two layers, so we will leave this setting as is. The width and height of the board will be changed later in the drawing. We will keep the default of solder mask on both sides. The solder mask reduces the chance of short circuits resulting from solder splashes. We will keep the default of silk screen on the top side. The silk screen allows you to label components such as R1 for a resistor. Now let's enter a short description of the board's function. Click OK and we are ready to start designing. Notice the origin icon in the lower left corner. This is coordinate 0, 0. Let's first adjust the size of the board. We will drag the top and right edges while watching the property bar here. First the top edge, then the right edge. Let's zoom to fit the screen by clicking the zoom to fit button. Now comes the fun part, actually designing the board. First we'll place the component footprints. We'll do it like this. On the left toolbar, click the footprint button. Let's say we want a 16 pin dip footprint. Since dips are through hole devices as opposed to surface mount, we open the plated through hole or PTH section, then the dip section, then dip 16. Click place on board. Move the mouse to the desired location. Left click. We can place more copies if needed. Or right click if done. Now let's place a six pin header. Footprint. Collapse the dip section we opened before. Connectors. Header. Six pin. Place on board. Left click. Right click. Easy enough? Okay, next, let's add traces and make pin connections. There are a few different approaches to connecting components in pad to pad. We can simply draw traces. This is the simplest way if you're new to circuit design. Or we can indicate connections with the mouse and then draw traces. Or we can create a net list which describes the connections to be made and then draw the traces. Or even use the auto router. For now, we will simply draw traces. Let's do it. Click on the trace button. On the property bar, select a default trace width of 20 thousandths of an inch. Let's also check that the snap to grid button is pushed in. This will keep our traces evenly spaced. And check that snap to angle is pushed in. This will keep traces at 90 or 45 degree angles. Now let's draw a trace. Left click at the first pin. Left click along the desired route. Left click at each turn. Point the mouse to the destination pin and make sure it highlights. This will ensure the trace stays locked to the pin if you later move components. Left click at the destination pin. Notice that the trace can continue on to another pin. Right click to end the trace. Now, without comment, we will make several more connections, including traces across the inside of the dip. Next, I'll show you what to do to cross over existing traces. This is where we jump to the other side of the board. For example, to connect this pin to this pin, 
we have to cross over this trace. We can do this by putting the new trace on the other side of the board. On the property bar, select bottom. Now we can route the trace on the bottom side of the board by clicking a pin, routing the trace, and clicking the destination pin. Notice the trace color has changed to represent the bottom layer. Now, let's suppose our board is finished and we want to review the design. It's usually a good idea to view each layer of the board separately, without the distraction of the other layers. Here's how to view the layers. Click View Layers. Click Visible to turn off all layers. To view only the top layer, click here. To view only the bottom layer, click here. To view only the top silk layer, click here. Click Visible to turn on all layers. Now, let's suppose we want to move a component, for example, to make space for a new component. Let's move the connector below the IC. If we drag the connector below the IC, we will need to reroute several traces. In rerouting the traces, we might make an error that could waste hours of time during debugging. Here comes the really cool part. To help guide us during the rearrangement, we will create logical connections. Logical connections tell pad to pad which pins are to be connected without knowing the actual path of the trace. Logical connections will protect us from mistakes during changes. Here we go. Select Nets. Create nets from traces. Confirm. OK. Now, let's move the connector below the IC and delete the traces that need rerouting. Notice the thin lines. These are the logical connection lines and tell you what needs to be connected. The logic connections will disappear if we correctly rebuild the traces. For example, let's resolve this logical connection. We would continue this way until all logical connection lines are resolved. In fact, it is recommended to create logical connections first, before even drawing the first trace of a new board. Or, you can import a net list to create logical connections. Let's draw a new logical connection to see how that works. Click the Logical Connection button. Click the pins that are to be connected. It's that simple. Logical connections also allow use of the auto router, which places traces automatically for you. Let's use the auto router to rewire the connector that we moved. Choose Tools, Route. This is the auto router dialog. We will leave all default settings as is. Click OK. All traces were placed for you in a few seconds according to the logical connections. Now, let's see how to place an order. We'll check the checklist and run the analyzer. We want your designs to work perfectly. Choose Job, Checklist. Here, you can review the checklist. Now, let's see if we have any errors or warnings. Choose Job, Analyze. The automatic design rule check engine protects you from the variety of possible errors. There are no significant errors, so we are ready to order. To order boards, choose Order, Place Order. Designing, pricing, and ordering circuit boards in pad to pad is quick, easy, and convenient. That's all for now. I'm Aurora Nestle, and thanks for watching.